Just... I've nothing. I've got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of it. Okay. <laughs> How about there's nothing you need to do to awaken? One of the big, uh, in my humble opinion, misconceptions that gives non-duality a bad name, especially with people who have done a lot of meditation, like my Buddhist friends. Uh, this seems disingenuous. So maybe we could talk about that some. Sure. I mean, we can talk about its truth value first, so we can get that out of the way. Okay. It's absolutely true that <laughs> that <laughs> nothing has to be done uh, for you to awaken. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, probably there's a way better chance of you awakening if something is done. Like, it is possible. It's true. You could just uh, wait to uh, be getting on a bus and have your entire uh, self-referential thought turn off, uh, as it ha happened to uh, Suzanne Seagal. But she had practiced a lot. She had practiced an enormous amount. A huge amount of practice. Yeah, but that's, that's not significant. I mean, really, all you really need to do... Is get is on way, off the bus. Yes, get like. In fact, what you ought to do is maybe get on and off the bus a lot. A lot. That way, you're going to increase the likelihood that, that, that it's going to happen. Time or you could say stroll across a park. That's right. And uh, you do it enough times. Yeah, enough times. Uh, you'll wake up, and then then you'll wake up. Or you could listen to the diverse and various traditions that have been practicing this for eons. And find which aspects of those traditions seem to work for you, and see if practicing doesn't actually yield some immediate feedback. Yeah, and what we know now, um, especially in the last six or eight years, there's a huge pile of good literature on training effects for basically every skill, everything you can think of, from violin to chess to uh, surgery to firefighting. I mean, the more you practice, the better you get at it. I mean, the brain uh, needs repetition to be able to get efficient at doing a particular task. We know that from riding a bicycle. Mm -hmm. Your first time on a bicycle is a traumatic event. You're flailing around. The brain's highly engaged if you, if you can scan, if you scan that. And later, when you become very proficient, you can, you can text, balance, you know, no, no hands, and carry groceries. Uh, but that's with a lot of training. And this, this magical 10,000 hour thing with Malcolm Mugridge came up with in one of his books, uh, it really represents this Erickson's work from Florida State, which is very thorough and complete. And it says exactly that, that, you know, there is no, uh, forget the genius thing. I mean, every high performer, every expert, uh, every adept had much, much, much practice before that. As you pointed out, though, it's not like nothing happens. It's not like, you know, you're practicing the violin and nothing happens until 10,000 hours. And you all of a sudden. All of a sudden, you start playing fantastically well. <laughs> Give me my Stradivarius now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in the whole process of, if you ever do 10,000 hours, in the process of moving up that ladder, you get better and better, and the music gets better, and you can play more sophisticated things and more complicated things. But, you know, to say, well, here's this guy. He's playing fantastically well. He never had to practice this. This is Naive, it just uh, isn't the truth. It's bizarre. <laughs> uh, well, and, and that's why I said it is true uh, under one understanding of the sentence. You have to do nothing in order to become awakened. Is that, yes, you have to do lots and lots and lots of nothing. Because my son, for example, mm -hmm. plays the violin. Mm -hmm. And he's quite good for uh, a 12-year-old. Mm -hmm. And uh, he... In order to play the violin, he has to enter something like a non-dual state. If he thinks about where his fingers are going to go as he's learning a piece, he messes up and becomes frustrated. Mm -hmm. His becoming frustrated is the self-referential self saying, hey, why can't you do this? Instead of just being with the violin, allowing his fingers to move, building off of past practice and continuing that practice in the future, in order for him to really perfect a piece, he has to get out of the way mm -hmm. of the piece uh, of, him, uh, of his body completing the piece, which means he needs to learn how to, from the perspective of a self-referential thought, do nothing rigorously, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean that the violin isn't getting played, that his body is not being trained in the various movements. Mm -hmm. To the contrary. So, uh, 
I think, you know, if we want to take this do nothing uh, approach to awakening seriously, we can say yes, but you have to do so very rigorously. And rigorously means incorporating that non dual state or the approach to it in any practice whatsoever. Probably if you looked at those 10,000 hour examples, at some point in that process, people will come into the awareness, either implicitly or explicitly, that they need to get out of the way for it to happen. But but it doesn't it doesn't happen all by itself. No, I mean it's like like when I think back to my many 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 hours of sitting meditation and doing yoga. Um, to your point, I mean I I routinely sat long enough, like thirty five minutes. Something really good happens in my experience in meditation at thirty five minutes. There is some kind of like a runner's high kicks in. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's neurotransmitters, some kind of release. But to your very point, I mean I had to practice, I would work for 34 minutes to get to this place to where I dropped into this you know, non-dual state. It, of course, then lasted you know, increasingly longer times, but then it shut back down again. But it's, I, it seems like, we haven't proven this yet, but the brain, uh, the more of those pictures it can get, and the better the pictures are, if it was just a picture of, oh, well, nothing special happened, but a little bit special, or this, wow, that was really a cool space, then I think the brain says, that's cool, and we'll start working on that. And I just, I always sat day after day after day after day until I got to that space. And I just never stopped until I got that space. So I think the brain just kept seeing that and said, hey, this is cool, and we'll refunctionalize for that. But you're, you're correct, you know. It's a lot of practice each time, and then you hope to get to maybe a very short period of transcendence. But at least you need to get, and that's a reward for your practice. You do get something good back out of your practice. Right, in other words, nothing is the accomplishment <laughs> Mm -hmm. Rather, so there's there's an ambiguity in what is being referred to. It's like, you know, you don't need to do anything in order to uh, achieve awareness. I think is, uh, you know, kind of a misunderstanding of the perspective that that's actually the achievement. The achievement is you not doing anything. Right. Um, and you know, from my son's perspective, he certainly feels like he has to go and practice his violin, and it's not always the top thing on his agenda. And so uh, I think this idea that there's nothing that you need to do maybe to be charitable about it is a um, kind of retroactive illusion that because after you've achieved a certain kind of state, you know, the call is less insistent to go and sit until you feel that, that mode of awareness because the mode of awareness is already here. And then you say, well, gosh, that mode of awareness has always been here. I know that it is the very substrate of my consciousness. If only I'd known back in the day, I would have just looked at it and experienced it. Yes, but... But you couldn't, you couldn't have, though. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think <laughs> that's, that's what's the misinterpretation now is that people who are out there and living in that space say, there's nothing you have to do to awaken. Look, I'm sitting here. I have to do nothing to awaken. And I'm sitting in that space. But then people read that and say, well, I'll just sit here and do nothing. And they really do nothing, not the kind of do nothing you're talking right. about. They really do nothing, and then nothing happens. Right. And they convince themselves philosophically that they've somehow reached some kind of a state. And they have one experience sometime in the past, and they believe now that, oh, oh, I really understand. But they don't. They haven't done the work to get to those repetitive do-nothings until you finally are, live there. Or, and, you know, equally problematic outcome, they come to the conclusion that there is actually nothing to all this, that they're... There is no such state that uh, people are experiencing, and then it's just a scam. Right. And, and that, that's, that's, I think, an emerging external view, as I mentioned up front, of the non-dual community that is increasingly voicing this, there's nothing you have to do, by the people who have meditated a long time and say, well, that's not true because I did all these things, and this happened, and it was really, you know, I had to learn into this thing, and now it's fantastic. But it's, to believe you just have to do nothing at all. Any no practice is just incorrect, disingenuous. Yeah, it's hard work to do nothing. Actually, you have to do hard work to, to get be, to nothing. Make it to get to nothing. Yeah. Well, and the same thing happens with running. If you've been, you've been, you're a runner, and all runners have seen the same thing. You run for a while, and there's a runner's high kicks in, and you're into this fantastically neurotransmitter reinforced blissful state, and there's nothing there except you're just there's just motion taking place. So many runners run to that place. I know, but it's interesting, though, because if you're a runner or a swimmer where 
you, you get to that place, you don't you don't then say, well, gosh, I didn't need to do those first fifty laps in order to get to this. I should have just been in this uh, right exactly. away. I jumped into water and been here. <laughs> it doesn't work. It, 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 it's it's not possible. You just get jump in the water and wait for the feeling to right. arrive. It's not going to happen. Gonna happen.